Happy Hump Day. Good morning and welcome. I'm Joe Jaquin, CEO of the Patriot Trading Group. You know the number, but I'm going to give it to you. 800 951 The website at www.allamericangold.com. You can order online. And by the way, uh, thank you so much. The, the online orders uh, continue uh, to improve. Uh, just been a, a huge month for you people out there ordering online. Uh, it's really simple. Just click on the go out to allamericangold.com. Click on the shark, sh- the shopping cart button, and you know just follow the directions, point and click. Uh, got a great gold item up there for sale uh, right now as we speak. So go check it out. Uh, today is Federal Reserve Day. Uh, everybody expecting uh, right after the show ends, the Fed to cut interest rates again. That'll put us in that uh, one seven five to two percent range, right? You know, let's just call it one seven five. Get it over with. Uh, but anyway, one seven five to two percent. The big issue is going to be the devil's going to be in the detail. It's going to be all about the press conference. Uh, things that they're going to be looking for: more rate cuts, quantitative easing. The repo market. Uh, Yesterday, we told you for the very first time in years, the Federal Reserve had to open up the Fed window because banks could not offload their debt and get money, get dollars. And, of course, if they don't have dollars, right, they can't load out more, more stuff, right? And, and and the problem was is there was people willing to buy it. They just weren't willing to buy it within the Federal Reserve's interest rate. Normally, the repo markets, let's just say the Fed funds rate's 2%, okay? And I know it's to, and for another hour, it's between 2 and 2 and a quarter. You, the the banks should be able to offload that debt for less than that, less than the Fed's funds rate. And most of the times, quite a bit less, but still just less. That's not happening now, right? Uh, the other day, they were up to 10%. Now, what was it? Yeah, you, you, we, I don't know. You can be the guess of it. Uh, but yesterday, they they had to lend out, they had to buy $53 billion. Today, and I warned you yesterday, it looks like this window is going to be open for a while now. Just too much debt. They don't have liquidity. It's a liquidity crisis. And this is what happens. You know what? We, we, we've paved the whole world with debt. All these banks, listen, every day we got to go to these debt auctions and sell billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of debt. We, we rack up over a trillion dollars of new debt every year for now, ever. And by the way, it doesn't stop at a trillion. And now all of a sudden these banks, and, I, and I, of course I've been telling you all about it, listen, they're going to run out of money. Well, yeah, we're doing, we, we got too many. We, don't, we, we got no more room. I can't loan down any money because uh, uh, everything's tied up in these treasuries. And sure enough, people smarter than me started writing to the central bank itself, saying, hey, dubbies, you guys are doing, remember that quantitative tiny? This is how clueless this group of bankers really is. And they're the ones that are supposed to protect your, protect your wealth? Are you kidding me? They were selling down that balance sheet. You know that four plus trillion dollars of, of who knows what they were, right? And Bank of America was writing them letters saying, hey, um, I don't know if you've noticed... 
But uh, people aren't coming to these auctions, and we're getting stuck with it all. And we're going to run out of liquidity. And they, they weren't smart enough to figure that out. Obviously, the the bank uh, the balance sheet runoff was a myth. It was a fallacy. It should have never been done because the system is not fixed. I keep trying to tell you that. You're a fool if you aren't protected. Seriously, just bottom line, you're a fool. Look at our rate, one seven five today. That's why I mean we're going to be down to one seven five. In the, in the, to quote the president, in the greatest economy we've ever had. That ought to scare the H-E double hockey sticks out of you. But it doesn't. Because you're like, oh, well, the Dow's at 27,000, please. The Dow doesn't represent America, not even close. But we know, we'll see it. Another crash is coming. We're a little, actually, and you know, that we're actually a little overdue for it. So yesterday, they had to sell $53 billion, or buy. Sorry, I keep saying sell, buy. Today, it was so bad that the number jumped to $80 billion. It was oversubscribed. Banks were dying to get rid of this stuff. I'll tell you what it was. Well... At least the, the the areas that it was in. And then Germany did something last night all of us should be worried about. How do you prevent price discovery? Do what the central banks are doing. Uh, the details are in. So this morning, the Fed announced, hey, we're upping the size. So yesterday, like I told you, they did $53 billion, $53.2 billion to be precise. Today they said we're going to do $75 billion. The problem was over $80 billion got submitted, which means somebody didn't get their liquidity. Somebody's out. Five billion. Now, the central bank won't tell us who it is. I don't know if is that one institution, or was it my guess? This is just me guessing. It was a bunch of small banks, right? Because the Fed takes care of their own. Like right? <laughs> J.P. Morgan, me, we're to take care of you, you little guys. Oh, sorry. But it really is now almost guaranteeing that tomorrow, it's my guess, is the auction size got to get even bigger. Uh, here is the other problem. What they had to pay exceeded the Federal Reserve's Fed's funds rate. So even the Fed being in the market wasn't enough. I'm going to break it down for you. Here's how today's auction, repo auction went. Banks handed back 50, over $57 billion of treasuries. Said, hey, listen, we need money. We need dollars. Take Here, take these treasuries. We'll pay you 2%, 2 and a two and a half. I think it was, I, I want to say it was over 2.5%. That's how badly they needed the money. 20 over 27 billion these are the ones by the way that that got submitted okay over 27 billion dollars in mortgages i do know the missing 5 billion was mortgages the fed did not buy 5 billion dollars worth of mortgage back uh mortgage back securities and again we don't know what kind we don't know which bank or banks got denied they'll fix it though don't worry they thought so, they really and honestly this is how dumb these guys are they they didn't set it up to where 
uh, they're like, oh, well, we, 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 uh, we're going to open the window, but we don't want everyone to get, get through. That's not what they wanted. They, they thought 75 billion. Oh, that'll be plenty. Right? Maybe they'll do 65. Right? They, they, they thought there was going to be some sand in there. They didn't, ever, they didn't dream about wait. wait, wait we got more bids, and by the way, the window was only open 20 minutes. Normally, they leave it open for 30. That's the norm. That was yesterday, 30 minutes. So my guess is there are still more coming, right? And and by the way, right, tomorrow, the second that window opens, you can bet, you can bet those banks are going to have uh, their money in there. Uh, the rate, I was wrong, Two. Point eight percent was the uh, was the rate so way above the Federal Reserve's uh, uh, the Fed's funds rate, which is supposed to be lowering another quarter of a percent uh, here in in what less than an hour, and we saw uh, and I'll, I'm going to give you yes so yesterday. A little over 40, 41 billion in treasuries, and just under 12 billion in mortgages. Today, over 50 billion, over 51 was 52 billion in treasuries, 27 billion in uh, in mortgage-backed securities, of which the central bank only bought. 22 billion of it. So, this is where we think this is headed. Obviously, banks were missing security, right? The, somebody didn't get $5 billion worth of liquidity. And this is it. We have a liquidity problem. Too much debt, not enough money. The Fed is seeing a chorus of demands at the discount window. Now, remember. Again, they operate in the darkness. Don't shine a light. Don't tell us. I want to know what really what I want to. Yeah, do I want to know about the bank that didn't get their five billion in liquidity? Yes. But really, what I want to know is how many banks got a problem. I want to know about the other seventy-five billion. Who needs the money? Who are we loaning it to? Right? We and we, listen. We know it's U.S. banks, it's European banks, right? How many of them? Who is it? They won't tell you. Think about that. Why wouldn't you tell us? And the answer is simple. Because if people knew, and, and I'll just and and, and again. This is an example. I don't know that this bank needed liquidity or not, but let's just say, for argument's sake, those scumbags at J.P. Morgan were at the Fed window. And if you want to know why I use the word scumbag, go listen to yesterday's show. They would be worried that people may do something about it. Wait a minute. Can you imagine? I'm a business owner. I employ people. People count on me to put a roof over their head. Don't you think I would have the right to know if the bank that I bank at has a liquidity problem? Don't you think I should know that? And you know what the central bank will tell you? Absolutely not. Nope. Because if we told you that, you may start taking your money out. You may go down the street and open up an account somewhere else. You may go to a bank that, you know, could you imagine? that? Here's the list. Here's the list of the banks that, that, that showed up to the repo auction. And really, wouldn't it be interesting... Here's who showed up yesterday, today, tomorrow. 
approval, right? All of it, and, and you get a pattern. Hey, my bank's been at the repo window every single day. I may want to move my account. See, that would create what? A bigger problem. Right? See, they don't care about us. And I keep telling you, they don't care about us. They want to protect the bank. They don't want to protect your wealth. They don't want to protect your money. If they wanted to protect your money, they would tell us who's got to go to the window. Because it more than likely means they got a lot of questionable stuff out there. Right? And 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 again, we don't I don't even know, you know, the treasury yield, right? We we know what that is, right? That that's US debt, right? Or, and of course the Fed oh yeah, we'll buy all that stuff. What is it? I mean, remember what happened last time? But again, outside of that, right? You know when they won't shine a light on something. You know how cockroaches are. If you get, if you've ever had cockroaches, I actually had them once uh, when I was single, uh, living in an apartment, and it was an older place, and. Uh, you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. If you turn the light on, what are the cock? Co- co- <laughs> Arlene, oh, what do the cockroaches do? They scurry, right? They scatter, right? Oh no, it's the light, run! Same thing here. They won't ever turn the light on. It's not a Motel Six. Right? They ain't leaving the light on for us. Nope. So now, people are saying, and again, we don't know. But the fact that this auction was oversubscribed, when the Fed, that, I mean, they could have easily said, oh, it's $85 billion or $100 billion. But see, they want to downplay. They don't want us to know how bad the problem is. And like I said, this thing ended 10 minutes early. And you're saying, oh, it was only 10 minutes. That's a third of the auction. The auction itself, it's only 30 minutes. Why did it end? Because they're like, man, could you imagine how bad it Oh, uh, we had to refuse $50 billion. Right? Who knows? How big is it? I don't know. How much liquidity do they need? I don't know. The most likely outcome. And, and again, the most this is going to happen. How soon? A lot sooner than they want to admit. They're going to have to bring back QE four. The banks just they can't handle it. Now remember, they were supposed to turn uh, their whole balance sheet into treasuries. Based on what I'm seeing, I don't know that they can. They may be stuck. They may have to keep buying the mortgages too. So that was that was this morning. I know for a fact they, there's more problems coming tomorrow, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, right? This is a huge avalanche of debt. And I don't know how they get out of it. Because it's not like the the amount of debt that's got to be consumed stops. It doesn't. they got to keep loading up. They got to unload it somewhere. All the banks are like, I don't need treasuries. I got to get rid of my treasuries. And they'll be like, well, I got my treasuries. And then they'll be like, I got all these mortgages. And the bank's like, well, I already got mortgages. I, I, need, I don't know what to do. But don't worry. Leave your money with the bank. It's fine. Well, don't, don't worry. It's great. You got FDIC insurance. <laughs> One of the, you know, not today, but I'll give you my FDIC insurance. You know they don't got any money, right? They don't have, it, I mean, this Johnson Bank can go under and they'll be okay. But any bank you've actually heard of, 
The Fed doesn't have the money. The, the FDIC doesn't have that kind of money. Not even close. I mean, let's face it, 90% of the money is in, what, the, the, the six largest banks, something like that? All of those banks have deposits well over a trillion dollars. The FDIC, they don't even have $50 billion. Come on, wake up. When we get back, when we get back, a big announcement out of Germany this morning that all of us need to pay attention to. This is another attack on cash. This is another attack on on gold, right? They don't want you to put your money with me. They don't want it here. They don't want you owning gold. They don't want you owning silver because that means your money's out of the debt system. They don't want it. I'm going to tell you what Germany's doing. And, and then, you know, obviously, is it coming here? Probably, right? You know how it goes. That's coming up next. This is the Phyllis Schlafly Report, a daily broadcast from Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, a national volunteer organization founded by Phyllis Schlafly and continuing to uphold her legacy by honoring family values, opposing radical feminism, and representing a conservative perspective in our nation's capital. Now the president of Phyllis Schlafly Eagles, Ed Martin. A news story caught my eye the other day about a mayor in Nevada who was powerless to stop a drag queen story hour event from happening at his local library. At these horrendous events, men dressed as women read stories and interact very intimately with young children. By any normal standard, it's absolutely insane. If the left's idea of inclusion is to put my kids around these highly sexualized and confused men, count me out. The only thing is that you can't say count me out with your tax dollars. Whether you like it or not, your tax dollars are going to fund these disgusting displays. Many of the libraries who put this stuff on will use the children's section of the library for their events. That means if you have the common sense and common decency to protect your children, you're not able to use the resources of your own public library for the time that the program is going on. The plight of Mayor Ron Smith of Sparks, Nevada, hit me like a ton of bricks. He's the duly elected mayor of his town. The people chose him to protect them and their tax dollars. Yet there was absolutely nothing he could do to stop the Drag Queen Story Hour from happening in his own community at a publicly funded institution. If the mayor cannot intercede on behalf of the people, who can? Instead of public dollars being controlled by the people or by the people's elected representatives, we have librarians who set themselves up as the arbiters of public morality. They decide what's appropriate when it comes to our money. We can't vote them out. We can't overrule them. That's the definition of tyranny. I'm not against public libraries, and I don't know any conservatives who are. But we have to make changes right here and right now. Whether it's libraries, schools, park districts, or any program on the local, state, or federal level, government funds should not be used to pressure children with dangerous transgender ideology, whether it fits into the leftist narrative or not. The content of libraries should reflect the values of the community funding it, and they should always put the well-being of our children first. Parents and grandparents jumpstart the education of that child you love so much with a proven phonics course. With Turbo Reader, anyone at any age can learn to read. For free information on Phyllis Schlafly's Turbo Reader, call toll free 1 866 Try Turbo. Open the door to a lifetime of reading and self motivation. Call 1 866 Try Turbo. Thanks for listening and join us again for the Phyllis Schlafly Report. We're back, 800-951-0592. Uh, last week we ran some AU $20 gold pieces, Liberties and Saints. And I've been telling you, the low end, there's just not a lot out there. I haven't, not a lot of deals out there for me uh, to have. So today, though, I got offered another AU deal. And these, I'm telling you, such a good looking coin. The ones that we got the last time, fantastic. I get I got from the exact same place, so I'm assuming the exact same quality here. The and AU for those of you that don't know, that's almost uncirculated. 
In other words, this coin uh, didn't get super beat up while it was in the treasury bag. You know, you got to remember, the Libs and the Saints, this is all pre-1933 stuff. The Libs, 1866 to 1907. I mean, you, you went around in horse and buggy. And and somebody got one. You know, maybe you know that they got that in their pay that week. Or they took it out of the bank, whatever they did. And they put it, you know, like in a sock drawer or something. And it didn't get all beat up and put into the cash registers and put on a ship and sent over to to France or England or wherever. I mean, really great looking material. Uh, this is they they actually lowered the premium a little lower than they did the last time, which was the lowest ever, it's the lowest premium ever. Today it's a, not much, but a little bit lower than that. We were at. Uh, we were selling them at I think it was fifteen ninety. I got AU twenty dollar Liberties and Saints at fifteen eighty five. So this is a coin that's going to look nicer than our normal coin, and it's going to cost you less. Fifteen eighty five. Right now, gold's fifteen ten. So that'll put it at seventy five dollars over spot. If you buy ten, I'll lower it ten dollars to fifteen seventy-five at ten or more. Now here's the deal. I want to throw this out there. We're gonna have the Fed announcement here in the next, you know, forty-five minutes or so. Between fifteen hundred and fifteen ten, that's the price. If gold jumps up 20 bucks after the meeting, I, the price will jump accordingly. Hey, listen, I don't know what's going to happen. Right? You, you, you never know. These, these guys are so clueless. If gold falls below that, I'll lower it. But right now, uh, you know, if, if you think that the, the Fed's going to cut rates and talk about quantitative easing and, and this, that, the other, uh, then you want to call before the meeting. 1585 AU Liberties and or Saints. You decide. You can mix them, match them. I don't care. Uh, if you buy 10 or more, 1575 at 800 951 By the way, silver's $18. I still have the dimes at $70 a roll. Silver Eagles at 435 And again, any big moves there will adjust accordingly. Now to Germany. The hunt for money moving into high gear in Germany. In 2017, the Europeans followed our lead, and they put a $10,000 limit on cash transactions, right? You know here... Right, if you want to give me more than ten grand in cash, I got these nice forms for you to fill out. So I can tell the IRS, right? Because you know, uh, you got to be a terrorist or or an evil doer, drug dealer. You know, then you have the, your know your customer law. That limit starting next year in Germany is being reduced to two thousand euros any transaction greater than that amount requires the buyer to prove their identity and give their data to the gold trader now this is part of new money laundering laws which obviously the gold and silver are are, are a part of this now of course None of these refugees that they let into that country are terrorists. She also wants to introduce what they call a 50-gram rule, which would apply regardless of price. Now, I don't know where this 50-gram comes with. For us, in a grand, they got, they're got they on the, you know, the metric system, whatever it is over there. 50 grams is like 1.6 ounces. So it's kind of an, a weird amount. 
six troy ounces and it's some big number 1.607 you know something like that but we'll just say 1.6 ounces that is see, they want to do this that is the most amount of gold she wants anybody to be able to buy without the gold trader taking personal data and having to save it for five years obviously if you had bought today if you in germany if you wanted to buy 220s right that would constitute you can't pay in cat now remember right what do they want credit card debit card personal check bank wire right and by law i got to keep all those records for five years uh but but again i'm just letting you know uh, the anti-money laundering laws in Germany going from 10000 to 2000 And then for gold, they're talking about a 50-gram law regardless of price. Now, here's the funny thing about the gold price. Uh, I don't think very long and 50 grams will be irrelevant. One, you know, 33 grams uh, is going to cost 2000 bucks. Uh, but right now, uh, even now, the, the, that at 1.6 ounces, you're still over. So that, that would automatically require, and the euro now is almost parity with the dollar. So it almost seems like uh, nonsensical to me, uh, that law. Anything over 2,000 is kind of the big deal there. And again, in 2017, before 2017, it was 15,000. They took it to 10000 Now they want to say, hey, we're going to only $2,000 uh, in cash uh, before you have to provide. I mean, come on, I can't even imagine. You know how many forms I'd have to fill out? Uh, that is not here yet, but you know, as the situation continues to get worse, they're going to want to have all the money in the system because... Believe you me when I tell you, one way or the other, they're going to get a hold of your wealth if you don't have some of it not in their hands, not in those debt markets. Pick up some gold, pick up some silver, put it away, and let's hope we don't have to use it. We'll be right back. More rate cuts on the way. The Fed window. Man. I, I I knew we'd see it again, but I thought it would be, you know, recession already, you know, like already here and, and, and all of that. And I thought before we saw the Fed window open again, rates would be at zero. It didn't even take that long. It's already here. The second, the second day it was oversubscribed. What a horrible mistake by these people. It should have never have been allowed to happen. The problem is I think they knew. Man, we, we can't come out and say a hundred billion, hundred and fifty billion. We can't do that. And then they cut it off, right? They stopped it early because they tried to they want to make it appear better than what it is. And now we don't even know what banks need the liquidity. Think about what they had to pay for it. It's how desperate they needed the money. They paid two and a half percent. Even with the Fed's help. That's how desperate they are for the but why? What do they have? What 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 do they need the money for? What bad debts do they have? I mean, do they gotta make uh you know, people gotta show up on Friday, and get their checks, right? Get their money? I mean I, I don't know. Of course, you, we're not going to know. They're never going to tell us uh, what banks were at the window. Of course, at this rate now, you start thinking about it, right? 80, 50 billion, 80 billion, 100 billion, right? You can pretty much rest assured what? Yeah, they're all at the window, right? And and uh, you start thinking about your wealth and, and how safe is it? How safe is that money? Because you know, you I know you know this. Those of you that are over the age of uh, 55, 
right? I'm 49, and I know this. Because all growing up, when I say growing up, in my 20s and my 30s, you, you were told this. Every 401k meeting your company ever had, any financial advisor, maybe your parents were there and they were telling you or you overheard them, or maybe you yourself were there. Hey, at 55, you get out of stocks. I mean, you can have some, but, you know, most of your money should be in, in a safer place, like bonds, right? Bonds, annuities. Those aren't safe. Right? Part of it, part of the appeal was what? Well, at least you get 6 7%, right? Nah. <laughs> nope. Now these banks are trying to pawn it off on the Fed because they need cash. 800 951 zero five nine two gold is sending you a message so it's not going to be a straight line gold gold took a little rest because you know wall street wanted to get happy right they've been sad right they wanted to you know get happy oh yeah hey hey china's going to talk to us like yeah that's going to save us come on it's not going to save us you know it i know it look at these debts nobody in the right mind you know, if this had been Obama, and no offense, but you know I'm right, and it was, let's just say somehow he could have been gotten three terms. Right? Remember, people were worried that was going to happen. Right? If the deficits were over a trillion dollars, you guys would be in freak-out mode. And you should, and rightfully so. Let's look at the debt for a minute. In order for the United States to actually pay down the debt, our GDP would have to be combined GDP of China, Japan, and India. By the way, they're the second, third, and fourth largest economies in the world, all combined. The United States owes over 68000 almost $70,000 per citizen. Now, that's great, but that little baby that just got born five minutes ago, he don't got no money, right? And neither do your young kids, neither do the old folks. Taxpayers at 183000 need I remind you, the average American has less than $400 in the bank. Here's the problem. In 75 years, which is, you know, not quite a generation. The unfunded liabilities is one hundred twenty-five trillion. Where we know we got our debt now is what you know, call it twenty-three trillion, plus all the other stuff that we don't even know about. I mean, think about it. The, the the average person is probably going to owe I don't know two three million dollars. Ah, that's fine. They're saying now the CBO, I didn't know this, but the CBO is now saying, hey, we're going to hit 100% of GDP by 2028. And remember, right now, that's the, the, the smaller number, what we owe. They're saying that's at 78%. I'm going to tell you, 100% uh, of GDP, you can, we're really at 106, but again, they don't want to count it all. And I won't go, that's a different show. The trust fund and Social Security and 100% of GDP held by the public are, are probably going to occur roughly around the same time. And 2028 ain't the time. It's, it's sooner than that. So just, just a good little rule of thumb. If you plan on being around, I don't know, for the next 8, 9, 10 years, yeah, you better... You better be ready. I hope you have called that number well, well before then. Interest on the debt is almost 100% higher than it was in 2008. Yeah, I mean, think about where we're, we're looking at interest on the debt eclipsing over $500 billion. Think about that. Even if the debt was paid off, we'd still be having debts of over half 
half a trillion. It's incredible. Final segment coming up. Final segment on this Federal Reserve Wednesday. I can't wait to see Jay Powell at the press at his press conference. You're right, the guy is you never know, right? Every other one, he's a total disaster. Uh, should be very, very interesting. By the way, this just crossing the tape. I've been telling you this, and no offense to the president. Uh, there's not going to be a trade deal with China. Jamie Dimon uh, now uh, just came out and said that uh, he does not believe that the United States and China will strike a trade deal before the election. And and I agree. There's no reason for them to. Right? And again, uh, and I've said, and I'll say it again, understand what they're asking. If you listen to the idiot box. If you listen to the, you know, guys like Limbaugh and Hannity, and Hannity, if you listen to those guys, you're not getting the right information. Sorry. What we're really asking for is for China to stop being a communist country. And they're not going to. They don't view it as stealing hey, you're in our country, you're doing business, and like a good communist, anything you create or do, we have the right to have it. Period. That's why we should have never went there in the first place. Right? If you want it all to stop, leave the country. Everybody leaves. You stop hiring Chinese workers. Right? You stop hiring. Like, you go to our colleges, they're loaded with Chinese. Then they go to work for these companies and they steal their stuff. They yes, that's what they do. Eight hundred I'm gonna give you the number again. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Don't take my word for it. Now, Jamie Diamond should have been telling you this a long time ago. But at least he's you know, again, eventually they tell you the truth. AU $20 Liberties and Saints and these things telling we just we just shipped them all out these things are really nice 1585 this is now the new lowest premium ever now I don't have that data the wholesaler does and this is what they said. lowest premium ever Ten or more, fifteen seventy-five. Right now, gold is up uh, about three bucks at fifteen ten. The Fed meeting is getting ready. We're going to have an announcement here in a few minutes. And and I said between fifteen hundred and fifteen ten, this is the price. Uh, if there's a big, you know, gold has a big pop, that price is going to go up. If it goes the other way, we'll lower it. Uh, but but again. I don't want to speculate one way or the other. If, I, if, 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 if he does what I think he should do, gold should pop. That doesn't mean that they will. Right? We've seen this out of them. Uh, but we'll see. I don't know. Now with this reap, I think this repo thing really changed everything. Uh, and, and now uh, I think that makes a case for them to be more dovish if they weren't already planning on doing so. Obviously, tomorrow, we'll talk about what he said today. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll talk again very soon, 23 hours from now.